Good morning. How is everybody this morning? Ain't it great to be in the house of the Lord? Thank you. Before I go any further, I want to give a special welcome to our visiting pastor from Nybrook Memorial Church in Logan, Brad Bailey. Hi, everybody. Again, it's good to be in the house because, you know, there's no place better than I can think of to come together. And for some reason, we have to feel like we have to be in God's house to feel God's presence. So I've come with great anticipation of feeling the presence of God in this house. So I want, again, I want to welcome everybody, get comfortable. Uh, if there's any special guests here that I heard any people I have not seen that are guests, please feel free, feel comfortable. Just enjoy the Lord. So, if you would all bow your heads with me, we'll do the opening prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for again, and once again, for the today and the place that you give us. We thank you, Lord, for your love, your grace, and your tender mercy. We've come here this morning again with great anticipation of being in your presence. Lord, feeling your love, your grace, and your mercy poured out upon us. Lord, bless this service, bless each and every one who's here. Lord, I also ask you to pour out a special blessing on those who are at home who are watching through the internet. Lord, again, I know we don't have to be in your house to be in your presence. So, Lord, those who are at home, let them feel the same feeling we feel here. Lord, the fullness of your love upon us. Go with us, Lord. Bless the service. Bless our pastor as he brings the message. Lord, and when we walk out here this, this morning, Lord, that people will know and they'll see you in us and through us. For this, I give you glory, give you honor and praise. For it is in Jesus' name I pray, in Jesus' name I ask the things I ask you, the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, it's the video. <laughs> Living with uncertainty can take its toll. The normal day-to-day -day is replaced with fear, worry, doubt. When our normal is disrupted, our surroundings begin to feel weak. Foundations begin to rattle. Our lives become disoriented. As time goes on, we begin to lose sight of the one constant on our journey. Jesus. The fear is consuming, the worry draining, the doubt painful. Even in our darkest moments, when the last thread of hope has unraveled from our being, we must dwell on truth. We must remember, no matter what is happening around us, God is still sovereign. Today, let us dwell on the truth of Easter. The stone has been rolled away. The grave has been rendered powerless. Death has transformed to life. In our fear, He is still risen. In our worry, He is still victorious. In our doubt, He is still alive. When everything seems hopeless, the hope of Easter remains. So it's kind of hard to come up behind something like that because, you know, it's rem remembering the sacrifices that was made for us. But the sacrifices was made for us so that it opened doors. It opened doors for God to work through us, for God to work for us, for healing, for blessing, for provision, for whatever it is we look to God for. But never, hopefully, we never fail to lift God up and give Him the praise for all He and His Son Jesus has given for us. But this time, right now, it goes back to a time where we say, God, we need you. We need your help. Well, we know somebody that needs your help. And but before I go there, does anybody have any praise or any testimony that they want to lift up and give to God and say, thank you, Lord, for what you did? Or you know somebody that was blessed? Now, 
Don't be bashful. <laughs> it works. Prayer works. Amen. Prayer does work. and it's Tuesday at, at Nybert Memorial and the pastor invited me to come and share my testimony. I didn't know how to preach in those days. Uh, I only shared my testimony, but there were three saved there. And Nybert became a very special place to me. I used to, when I was teaching at uh, Logan Central Junior High, I used to walk down off the hill and have prayer during my lunch. And it was a very special place and, and uh, I've just come to love a lot of those people over there. Of course, that's been nearly 50 years ago. Thank you. Anyone else? Now let's go to a time where we ask for help or we stand in the gap for somebody else to helping to lift them up in prayer and standing in prayer for those. So you have anybody on your heart right now you'd like to lift up? Raise your hand and they'll bring a mic to you. Uh, yeah, there's a young man that I went to Camp Grace with a couple of times in recent years, and I just found yesterday, found out yesterday, he's only in like mid-20s or something, that he passed away, and he's in the military, and they're supposed to be doing some kind of investigation. I'm guessing it wasn't battle-related. And then there's another fellow from Camp Grace I go to that his, his dad has... COVID and pneumonia, and he's really having a hard time now. His family can't be with him, and he could really use some prayers for him and for Daniel Burhan's family. A very sweet friend of mine lived up my way. Um, her name is Sandy Deck. She is in the hospital battling three different infections at the same time. So... Please keep her in your prayers. Thank you, anybody. <coughs> I'd like you to pray for my friend Kelly Griffith's dad, Jerry Ball. Um, he was diagnosed with COVID pneumonia and has been hospitalized. And then I learned um, last night that a classmate of mine, Woody Hunter, also has COVID pneumonia and is... Um, battling that right now so that he needs all the prayers you can give him. We have a lot of prayers on this list this morning. First of all, my sister-in-law, uh, who lives in Charlestown, was flown to the University of Virginia on Friday night with COVID pneumonia. She is in serious condition and is on a vent. And uh, we would ask for prayers for her. My brother has to stay in a hotel room. He can't be with her now but because of the COVID. So please pray for them. And also, uh, some of you may have heard, but we call him Uncle Bob, Bob Spratt. And he was the last of that generation, and he passed away on Thursday night. So keep the family. We don't know any plans, but please keep all our family in your prayers. Uh, keep uh, Alan Brown in your prayers as he continues to fight what he's fighting. And also uh, think about uh, my daughter, Brooke, with finals week this week. Uh, she's pretty busy with track and that. And so uh, need your prayers. Um, just continue to remember Courtney Green and her girls in your prayers. Thank you. I remember Daryl Kimbler. Uh, he had surgery for the, his cancer. They had reduced it down to where they could operate. I'm not sure what the final results were as far as what they were able to reconstruct, but keep him in your prayers. And again, Kristen Bias, on my understanding, she started her chemo. Keep her lifted up. And don't forget about the people on, your pr on the list, the special needs people. You know, we've got a list of people that we need to to keep in mind and, and lift them up. Now the Lord says, keep me in remembrance of my word. So repetitive prayer, people, because some people will say, well, if you pray once, it's a lack of, more than once, it's a lack of faith. I don't buy that. 
I think God's a big enough God where he knows our failings and our shortcomings that if we keep coming back to him, it's not because we're uncertain. It's because we're reassuring our faith in God. Do I see somebody? Remember Debbie Charcandy and Bobby White. Anyone else? If not, then if you'll join with me in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for another day, another day. We thank you, Lord, for being here. We thank you, Father, that we look, can look to you for all things. Lord, we lift people up in prayer. We do this because our faith is in you. Our trust is in you. We gather together, Father, and you st and standing on your word, knowing that you said, for two or more gather in your name, you are there also. So how can we be any closer to you than what we are right now? So Lord, I, 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 we ask so much of you. But Lord, I know you're a big enough God where there's no doubts, no lack of faith, that there's nothing that you can't handle. But there's a lot of times you have blessed us in ways that we don't even understand it. We didn't see it. We didn't realize it. Somebody said it was luck. But it's those little miracles in our lives that comes along that we really don't pay attention to sometimes. And we fail to say thank you, Lord, for what you've done. But, Lord, we oftentimes we also see those big miracles, those that stands out where we know you've been in the midst. And we lift you up and we say thank you for that. For it's in all things we look to you. It's in all things that you said you want to be a part of our life. And you have proven it time and time again. Lord, whether we need physical healing, whether we need mental peace, wisdom, knowledge, or understanding, whether we need finances, because, Lord, it takes money to make it in this world anymore. But most importantly, when we, as we need spiritually to grow, to have a closer walk with you, through knowing your word or you bring remembrance of your word back to us, Lord, it's all part of our growing in faith. So let us never fail, Father, and keep reminding us that you're with us. And when we think we're alone, remind us, Father, you're right there beside us. When we fall down, Lord, you reach down and you'll help us back up if we just look to you and we trust in you in all things. Lord, also for Brad, who bring us the message, let his heart be your heart, his word, your word. That, Father, for what he says, touches our heart and helps us to grow as people, as Christians, to be the people you'd have us be, to do the things that you'd have us do, to be a light into a path, a lamp into our feet. Go with and each and every one of us, lead, guide, and direct us, Father, and when we leave here today, Lord, let your light shine in us and through us. For this, for Father, I do ask of you, Lord, in Jesus' name, and it is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So now I would like to have Janet come do the children's thing. We have any kids? Come on up. whole big bunch of them today. <laughs> so I guess maybe we'll just turn it into an adult summit. <laughs> no? What time of year is it? Is it winter? No? Is it summer? It's, uh, it's summer? You're still in, no it's not summer. You're still in school. What time of year is it? Max, do you know? It's spring, yes it is. What does spring mean? What happens in the springtime? It rains, yeah. <laughs> and rains, and rains, and rains. Uh, what does the rain do? It gets us wet, obviously. <laughs> but what else does it do? Why does it rain? What good does rain do? Jane Ellen, you know? You don't know either? 
It's just, it's just disgusting, isn't it? The sun's not out and it's raining. What about making things grow? Does rain do that? Does rain help things to grow? What else happens during the spring? New things? Flowers? New flowers come out? What about uh, animals that have babies? They have a lot of babies in the spring, don't they? Goats and sheep and bunnies and... Yeah. Spring is a time that things come back to life, right? And that's kind of why that we like to celebrate Easter in the spring. Not only is it supposed to be in the spring, but also it's about Jesus coming back to life, isn't it? He, he was resurrected. That's a big word. And someday you will be able to say all these big words like resurrection, theology, uh, prevenient grace, all those kinds of words. But people won't know what you're talking about unless you can explain it. So anyway, we're going to talk about new things. And did you know that when you ask Jesus to come into your heart, he makes you a new thing. Yeah, he does. Um, I don't have my phone with me, but uh, the verses in Corinthians, what did I do? Um, Seven. Second Corinthians. Five, 17. And it says that all things are made new in Christ Jesus. So that means that you're kind of like a new person and you don't do the same things that you used to do that were bad you know you don't talk about people anymore and you don't um, pull people's hair or kick people or hate people for no reason we like to be new people in Jesus so would you pray with me please dear God we thank you for spring we thank you for new flowers and new animals. We even thank you for the rain sometimes. Thank you, Lord, for making us new people that we can always come to you and say we're sorry for what we've done. You will forgive us and make everything new again. Thank you for the resurrection of Jesus. Because it's through his resurrection that we have the promise that we can be with you always. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I kind of jumped on a little out of order on the bulletin there, so please forgive me. But now I'd like to welcome Brad to uh, give us the message. We get to hear God's word and get blessed from it. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, brother. And thank all of you uh, for the warm, uh, kind welcome uh, that, that you have given me this morning. Uh, this is such a beautiful sanctuary, beautiful church, uh, and it is a pleasure uh, to be with you here this morning. You, you aren't aware of this, but I have a, a special connection uh, to this church, even though I've never been to this church before today. I am a Coalfield boy. I grew up in Williamson in Mingo County. The first church that I ever served was Kermit UMC, which also was the first church that Pastor Tex ever served. So, so while I was there, 
Tex and I got to know each other pretty well because Tex came back quite often to do funerals and he came and preached homecoming for us while I was there. So, uh, and he is, and I don't have to tell you this, but he is just a fantastic uh, person, human being, just a special man. Uh, so it is a pleasure uh, to, to be to, to fill the pulpit that he once filled and to fill the pulpit that Nathan uh, is filling now. Na Nathan is a wonderful person as well. He and I are good friends, and you are very, very fortunate and blessed to have him as your pastor. And I know I'm preaching to the choir <laughs> on that. Um, this is part of the Boone Logan Cooperative Parishes Pulpit Exchange Sunday. Uh, which when we first came, Nathan and I first came in July, we got together with the other parish clergy uh, and, and decided we wanted to try to do some things uh, as a parish uh, to, to actually, as the cooperative parish, cooperate. <laughs> I know it's a novel idea, right? But to, <laughs> to cooperate as the churches in, of the people called United Methodists in Boone and Logan counties. So, so this is really the first step uh, in that, uh, and, and I hope that this is uh, the first of many, many more times where we can exchange pulpits and get together uh, as the church of God, as the one church of God, particularly as COVID continues. Hopefully, we hope and we pray uh, to, to wane. Um, I don't know what you are used to, uh, but, you know, uh, back in the day, they used to call us shouting Methodists, right? If you feel like shouting today, by all means, shout. Be happy, rejoice in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. I'm going to share with you today a reading from the prophet Ezekiel. Uh, and, and this is the first 14 Verses, a very familiar passage, the first 14 verses of Ezekiel chapter 37. Uh, appropriate text, I think, for Easter season. Uh, hear the word, the good news of God. The Lord's power overcame me. And while I was in the Lord's spirit, he led me out and set me down in the middle of a certain valley. It was full of bones. He led me through them all around, and I saw that there were a great many of them on the valley floor, and they were very dry. And he asked me, Son of man, can these bones live again? I said, Lord God, only you know. He said to me, prophesy over these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the Lord's word. The Lord God proclaims to these bones, I am about to put breath in you and you will live again. I will put sinews on you, place flesh on you and cover you with skin. When I put breath in you and you come to life, you will know that I am the Lord. And I prophesied just as I was commanded. There was a great noise as I was prophesying, then a great quaking, and the bones came together bone by bone. And when I looked, suddenly there were sinews on them. The flesh appeared, and then they were covered over with skin, but there was still no breath. He said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, say to the breath, the Lord God proclaims, come from the four winds, breath, breathe into these dead bodies and let them live. And I prophesied just as he commanded me. When the breath entered them, they came to life and stood on their feet. An extraordinary large company. He said to me, son of man, these bones are the entire house of Israel. 
they say our bones are dried up and our hope has perished. We are completely finished. So now prophesy and say to them, the Lord God proclaims, I am opening your graves. I will raise you up from your graves, my people, and I will bring you to Israel's fertile land. You will know that I am the Lord, and when I open your graves and raise you up from your graves, my people, I will put my breath in you, and you will live. I will plant you on your fertile land, and you will know that I am the Lord. I've spoken, and I will do it. This is what the Lord says. This is the good news of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Lord God, giver of life, open our hearts and minds to the movement of your spirit among us now, that you may breathe resurrection power into us that we and our communities our churches may live again amen abandon all hope all ye who enter In Dante's literary masterpiece, The Inferno, those are the words inscribed over top of the entrance to hell, the gates of hell. Now, Dante's interpretation of hell is one that it is a place where hope, the expectation that somehow tomorrow will be better than today is eternally, forever lost. Gone forever. Dried up and dead. So, if hell and the concept of it is that it is a place of no hope. Then, my dear friends, my, my siblings in Christ, hell is not only some place in, in another realm, some place in the nether regions of the universe. But it can also be found right here on earth existing anywhere where people and communities have been ravaged humiliated defeated and traumatized indeed church if we view hell through its hebrew conception as being the land of the dead then there are plenty of places even right around here, that fit that description. And one of those places that most definitely fits that description can be found in the pages of Ezekiel, where we discover a people that have been socially and spiritually dislocated, displaced, and disconnected. An isolated, dismembered community. The Judean exiles in Babylon are a broken and a scattered people. They are dispersed and dispossessed. They have been ravaged by war, defeated, humiliated, traumatized. Their whole world has been blown completely apart. And we can hear the anguish 
in their cry when they say our bones are dried up, our hope has died. We are completely cut down and we are completely destroyed. Did you catch that? Church, they don't say that all hope is gone or or we've abandoned or lost hope. No, for them, hope has died. And there ain't no coming back from death. Right? Hope has gone into the grave. Today we're in this living hell on earth and tomorrow, well, it's never coming. Heaven, the kingdom of God, seems to be a bridge too far. We're trapped, doomed. This is our fate. We are forgotten and forlorn and Life no longer has meaning. We, like hope, are as good as dead. We, like hope, have been put in the grave. There is no coming back for us. But God. But God, through the words of the prophet, gives and shapes meaning in the midst of all of this madness. And God, through the prophet, resurrects, brings up from the grave the most essential of all things. God raises expectations for a new dawn. God reforms this community that is trapped in a living hell. And God says to the exiles in Babylon, I have not forgotten you. I am still with you. And though you be dismembered now, I will remember you, reconnect you, put you back together again and raise you up out of the grave and breathe new life into you. Hope is not gone. You are getting your life back. I am raising you up and putting you back on your feet. You will live again. The late Elie Weissel, a Holocaust survivor and and Nobel laureate, once said of this story, in Ezekiel, that every generation, every generation needs to hear this vision in its own time that these bones may live again. And my dear siblings in Christ, if ever there was a time that we right here in the coal fields of southern West Virginia, need to hear this divine vision that these bones can live again. It's right now. We here in the coal fields seemingly trapped in the living hell of systemic poverty, of systemic drug addiction, our world, everything familiar to us, seemingly blown apart, forlorn, forgotten, disregarded, and abandoned, ravaged, traumatized, laid low, socially and spiritually dislocated, displaced, and disconnected. 
our people placed on the cross of economic exploitation by the powers and authorities, the rulers in high places, left for dead to rot in the valley of dry bones. And we look around, looking for hope anywhere, and can't seem to find it. We look around and we find ourselves as a dis membered community. And there seems to be no hope and no future for us here. As we ride around our communities and see abandoned storefronts and crumbling abandoned buildings, it seems that all is lost. Will tomorrow ever come for us? Or has tomorrow, for the people right here in this region that, that put the building of this nation on our backs, has tomorrow been buried in the grave? Can these bones, church, can these bones live again? People of God. Madison UMC, hear me when I say a new day is coming. A new day is coming because the God who resuscitates, reanimates, and restores is still breathing new life into dead things. The same God that raised up the people of Judea out of exile in Babylon and brought them back home and rebuilt them and restored them is still in the business of resurrection. The same God who raised Jesus Christ from the grave is still in the business of raising dead people, dead churches, and dead communities from the grave. Amen. Amen. Don't you abandon hope. Because hope lives. And I'll tell you how I know that hope lives. Because I know a man who was trapped in his own living hell of living the lifestyle of drug dealing and drug abuse. I know a man who, who shot up homes and robbed and physically assaulted people, was arrested on two different occasions for firearms charges, who ran kilos of cocaine from the deep south to the coal field. A man whose society had tossed aside and lost hope for. A man whose society had marginalized and stigmatized and ostracized. A man for whom hope for tomorrow had died and been put in the grave. But God. But God, but God, but God, breathe new life into his dead bones. Raise him up on his feet. Put him in the pulpit in front of you today. And let me tell you, church, siblings in Christ, if God's grace is powerful enough to raise me up 
into new life, then God's grace is powerful enough to do the same for you, to do the same for your families, to do the same for our churches, and do the same for our communities. God's grace is powerful enough to raise up the lowly. God's grace is powerful enough to raise up hope. Church, hope lives and hope lives today. Why? Because Jesus lives today. Jesus came up out of that grave. And let me tell you something, folks. All of creation comes out of the grave with him. So may we look to the God of hope who is still in the business of resurrecting dead things to resurrect our hope for tomorrow. In the name of the three-in-one creator, redeemer, sustainer God. Amen and amen. Let us pray. God of grace, I don't know about the rest of my sisters and brothers in here today, but I feel your Holy Spirit power moving in this place. Lord, I feel you and your power giving us the invitation to trust in that power, your resurrection power, that no matter what it is that we are going through in our personal lives today, in this very moment, no, no matter what our families are going through, no matter what our churches may be experiencing, no matter what it looks like with our natural eyes when we drive through our communities, you are giving us the invitation to trust you to open up graves. To breathe life into these dry bones. And to raise all of those things up onto their feet again. Lord, open our hearts that we may trust in your power today. that we may see the vision of tomorrow that you have placed into our spirits. That through and by your power, we will live and prosper again. And all of God's people said, Amen on that. You know, hope or faith is the evidence of things hoped for, but not so seen. If you don't plant the seed of faith, if you don't exercise the hope, there's no look for tomorrow. But the message we've gotten today is, yes, there is hope. Because God's still active. God's still working. No matter how dire it may seem. No, I'm mad, no matter how mad I may get at God, yeah, I've shot my mouth off several times, but God's big enough, God's real, so you'll be all right, but uh, God's still working, God's still alive, great message, thank you. Announcements, um, what's coming up in the church? 
um, Tuesday, don't forget about Bible study. Six o'clock in the fellowship hall, snacks are being provided. Books are out there in the hallway beside the front door if you need a book. Um, and then, of course, Wednesday we have youth. Anything special going on with the youth other than being six o'clock? Six o'clock. And keep them coming out, bring them out, invite them out. That's the life of our church. That's not just the church for tomorrow. That's the church today. On Thursday, we are doing Romans. We're in a second chapter of Romans on Bible study. Uh, snacks are provided by those who attend. And last week, Nathan fixed us peach cobbler and ice cream, and it was so good. So if you guys are missing out, at least nothing else on the treat. But the word, the message is good, and everything's good about what we learn and we, as we learn more about the Bible. But on the, on, on, at this point in time, though, we do need a snack volunteer for this Thursday. So it's kind of hard to top Peach Cobbler. <laughs> yeah. Uh, again, those the second cha- first and second chapter of Romans for the mes- for the lessons are out there on the table at the front door. Um, is there any other announcements or anything anybody can think of that I'm forgetting? United Methodist men are gathering next Sunday, and it is at 7? Cook at 7, eat at 8. If you're a good cook, 7 o'clock. <laughs> if you're like me, I wash dishes. <laughs> Okay. Anybody else? Janet? Yeah. Okay, I'm hoping everybody has got all their information to Janet by now. Because... Because last second stuff doesn't work in a case like this. And again, Janet needs, them, needs to get with them. So get in touch with Janet and make the arrangements to gather at the point in time that you need, okay? And continue again. If you got any other information, get the information to Janet. Anybody else? If not, I'll leave our closing word for Friday. Church, receive the blessing of God today. May the love of God the Father and the grace of God the Son and the transforming and resurrecting power of God the Holy Spirit be with you always from this day evermore. Now go, leave this place loving God with all of your being and loving your neighbor as yourself. And may the peace of Christ go with you as you do. Amen and amen. Thank you so much.